Mina, konbanwa, Jesus freaking gamer here, coming at you with First Chronicles chapter 21, and this just struck me as funny. This was like amazingly tough guy, just bad, but this is I'm using the Christian clean way of saying it, because it's one of my preacher videos. This guy's just cool as heck. So, backstory, the beginning of chapter 21, David takes the census, he's sinned, God comes down and says, pick three things. You're going to pick, and let me read it right out of here. You can pick between, in verse 11 and 12, three years of famine, three months to be defeated by your foes with the sword of your enemies overtaking you, or else for three days the sword of the Lord, the plague in the land, with the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. So David chose the hand of God. Tens of thousands of people died. And the angel of the Lord apparently, uh, in verse 16, Then David lifted his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, having in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. I'd imagine, so if you see an angel that could wipe out your entire city, that thing's armed and that thing's attacking, I'll bet you would be terrified. Now the verse that got my attention was verse 20. Now, Ornan turned and saw the angel. He, by the way, um, Gad the prophet told David, go to this dude's threshing floor, buy it, offer burnt sacrifices on it. So, in verse 20, Now, Ornan turned and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. But Ornan continued threshing wheat. How amazing is it? You're watching the death of thousands of your people. You're seeing an angel. Who knows what the size of this thing is? I'm guessing if he's like hovering over Jerusalem, this is a big angel. And his sword is drawn. He's there to attack. He's there to kill. This dude just keeps threshing wheat. And what I've got to say about that is he has the exact right attitude. He's letting God take care of God's business. And to have that calm a demeanor, it was one of two things. Either he just was like, whatever happens, happens. There's nothing I can do against that. Or, and hopefully the latter, the second thing I'm going to say, he either just said, you know, God is doing God's thing. I accept his will. I trust his judgment. I can't escape from the hand of the Lord. I might as well keep doing what I'm doing. It's not like I could possibly hide or escape. That is a level of maturity and wisdom not found very rarely among humans of any caliber or any faith nowadays. To have that level of boldness and confidence in the Lord and to just keep going on when everything around you is literally hell. Thank you so much. Was it Ornan? Thank you so much, Ornan, for being such an amazing example of what Christ in us can be. And back then, I don't know if he was filled with the Spirit or not. Apparently not everyone had the Holy Spirit back then, but man, for him to see the angel of the Lord and keep doing what he's doing, my only thought is at the very barest of minimums, his heart had to be right before the Lord. And whatever the Lord chose, he was ready to accept. He was ready to meet his maker. He was ready to go wherever it was they went in the Old Testament. Maybe heaven, some have theorized some other place, but standing before the Lord nonetheless. So, Ornan, you're a cool guy. May we myself and the others in the church in America and around the world follow your example of seeing just absolute chaos break around us and realizing God is in control and things are not going to go absolutely bonkers or insane unless he allows it. So even if you don't see an angel and life's just pure hell at the moment, God hasn't forgotten you. He's right there and he's in control. And remember, based on another message that I pressed very recently, preached, pressed, yeah, I did kind of press it on you, we do have the victory in Christ Jesus. We have divinely powerful weapons if we will hold them, if we will train ourselves to use them, and if we will use them when the time comes. The enemy can't stand against us. And even in the middle of judgment when it hurts, a good father disciplines their children. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you liked it, Please share with a friend if you think it'll help them in their walk with the Lord. Hit that like button. If you didn't like it, dis hit the dislike button. Uh, it's all good. I don't usually do it at the end of these preaching videos. I don't know. Just felt like doing it this time. Maybe it'll be a thing at some point in the future. Who knows? But anyway, regardless, thank you for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.